Hey guys, it's Saru, and one of the highest requested videos that's been said that I should do for Swords of Legends Online is what you do after you hit Student 1 or Level 37. You're done leveling, you're confused on what to do, so what exactly do you do? How do you get started? Well, hopefully I'll be able to answer all of these questions here, and if I miss some, well that's awkward because I literally scripted this video, so that will be hilarious. <laughs> Please no. So, let's get right into it. We're going to start with the absolute most base of the game. When you log in every day, make sure to always get your login rewards and collect your daily crystal dust. With this also comes a daily buff that I've already mentioned in a previous video up here, but the crystal dust is important as it will save you a ton of time in the future to buy cool cosmetics and mounts. All right, now yes, there is a battle pass and we're going to do the quest. What to do, this is your main priority. We're getting free gear here. So let's figure out what to do first. First, head on over to your cultivation or press J, click on your daily and weeklies, and these are going to be your daily and weeklies, basically, so <laughs> you need to clear these in order to receive Alliance XP as well as important items like parchments. Always look at your events calendar because this will tell you what you need to know for the week, such as when a specific battleground is going to be taking place or when a leisure event is starting. A great example is Demon Elimination, which is part of my daily today, so just click on Start Autopilot, mostly because I'm lazy, and it will actually take you there. Another cool thing about your cultivation is that you can see all of the dungeons you've done, what you require, etc. So if you have a check mark on the dungeon itself, it means that you've cleared it fully. If not, you can hover over the dungeon itself and it will tell you what to do and what you need to clear. Additionally, you can and should be doing your Jade Helper scroll. To do this, you can head on over here and click on Jade Helper. You'll notice that it says 30 out of 30 or 20 out of 20 and so on and so forth. Essentially, when you bring a newish player or flower people, as I call them, this is determined by the total gear score that they have, so under 45 for normal modes and under 55 for hard modes, you'll receive 15 mentor tokens each. So if you have 3 flower people, you will have 45 that drop from the chests. These tickets can be redeemed to buy things such as Mysterious Parchments, Infinitive, which is the best ones you can possibly get in the game, and I'll explain why afterwards. You can also receive the full power mentor reward, which gives you some items and as well gives you a buff called the Pro Mentor, which allows you to get 28 fortune. Which is very important because this is basically the RNG element. The more you have of this, the more drops you'll get, the better identifying you'll be able to get, so you can get a 2 or a 3 or something when you identify in the quality and so on and so forth. This buff lasts for 7 days and it's very helpful when needing to get drops. So let's head on over and finish up Demon Elimination. While you're queued, it may take some time, so you can actually finish up other dailies quickly. In this case, you'll notice Chang'an Battle Arena, but it's a little bit far from this area, and I won't get there in time, so I'll do it later. And each one of these completions for the dailies and weeklies will give you 10 Alliance XP for your prestige, which I'll go over in another video or something. So let's get some of these out of the way. Heartstring, easy. You just throw a heartstring at someone, and that's it. We're gonna get started with a card game, which you can do over here if you wanted to do easy, basic version. It's over here in this area. Good old Yu-Gi-Oh. Get those done as fast as possible before it's done, but unfortunately for me, by the time the queue popped, I only cleared two. As for how this game works, you're probably wondering how this works and the best way to actually fight Game of Eternity. Well, I don't fucking know, so I don't know how to, I don't know what to tell you. But you'll notice I have to do three in order for the daily to count it. There's also a weekly version of this to do it in one of the main cities that you have to do it ten times. So I got my demon elimination out of the way, killing random demons for soul chests pretty much along with some gold and when i finish my instance here i also finished the last card game and bam two dailies already done remember to always go to your cultivation and collect the reward you'll notice that once you do so for your battle pass you'll also be rewarded with the tokens that it rewards so i'll get two season one tokens for the demon elimination and i'll also get some for the card game now one of the cool things that i've mentioned in the past that i don't really think a lot of people know about is the search function i did mention this in my previous video but i'll mention a few more things that it can do let's say you forget where biographies are you can type it here and bam the menu will appear you you can type astral essence, anything. You can even use your collectibles. And all you have to do is scroll down with your mouse wheel to access some of these. 
If it says menu, it will open up a UI menu for you. It's definitely easier than trying to remember what the keybinds are, because I don't remember all the time because there are a lot of keybinds and there are a lot of menus in this game. So keep that in mind when you're trying to open up new menus. So with instance expiration, it's recommended that you do this every single day. The reasoning for this is that it will give you mysterious parchments current and it doesn't matter what level. So if your pet is level 60, you'll get 60 parchments. If it's 75, you'll get 75 parchment level. You can get up to 16 a week as of this video. With the new patch, it'll be 18 and so on and so forth in future updates. So that does not mean that you only get 16. That is the biggest confusion in the game and rightfully so. So for each one that you get, you get between 6 and 12 parchments. So with your 60 pet, you'll get 12. With your 75, it'll be 6 for right now at least. You use these to purchase items and you need to purchase items actually to level it up. So if you buy 1,000 parchments worth of stuff, you'll get 1,000 experience and therefore you can now go to the next level. Now I know someone here will probably ask and notice that there are some stars on my gear for my 75 stuff, right? I did mention in my previous video that the combination tool allowed me to wear any piece of gear that I wanted. Now this is actually my ideal set, what I want right now. One of the cool things that I forgot to mention in that video is that the combination tool will actually help you with buying. So for example, in my combination tool, if if I wanted to change this necklace around and save it by applying it, the other necklace would no longer show and it will switch to the red one. Same if I just go back. The game is basically trying to help you in choosing your items so you don't mess up. So I don't have to remember, oh, I needed this particular piece of gear set because I saved in my combination tool and therefore it's already starred here, as one could put it, I guess and it'll be part of my deal set that I've saved. All right, so let's go back to parchments really quickly. In Cloud Rise, there are a number of NPC stores that you can actually purchase these from. But before we go there, let's look at the Heartstrings vendor, which is important if you have a close friend to always play with. For me, it's my little lady, Neko. We're sworn friends. The more activities you do together, the higher your friendship gets, and that's kind of the point. So you can make them a sworn friend and level that up. Once you do that, you can get passive buffs that you can get like this 5% fortune and more drop, and you're actually grouped up with them. You can even add your own friends titles in game and icons. So now for the first NPC with parchments, the attendant's login shop. The currency for this is literally just logging in daily. You'll get a box that opens up some login tokens and you can check all of your currency right here when you go into your inventory. As you can see I have 46 and this costs 20. I've already bought some so that's pretty much it. We'll go over to the main building and this is where you'll be able to purchase the most important parchment. So let's start with the mentor shop right here. You'll see current which I I don't really recommend buying unless it's the very last thing you need. I recommend buying the infinitive. The reason for this is it will not count towards your total amount needed for the parchments. So if I buy this current one, it will count towards my 16 cap, so it'll give me 6 because I have my 75 version. Infinitives will not. It will give me 6, but it won't count towards the cap. You can purchase additional current ones right next to this NPC at the Blood Rubia shop and the Turquoise shop. These are all just currents that you can purchase to finish up your cap. My recommendation is that you get all of your infinitives, with your instruction you get two of those actually, and after you're done with it, do your raids that can drop the 75 ones, and then you can cap out with the current ones. Next is the League Merchant. You can purchase seal stones too in this little area, which I don't recommend whatsoever because you can get them quite a bit in the game. As well as other talismans like the other shops for your gear, including dragon accessories for socketing some of your gear, but I go over this on my other video which you can check out right here. And now for maps. Treasure maps are actually a fun way to play the game. You can go over to the Natural History Academy shop right here and purchase some maps, but you are capped at one go, so you can only purchase five at a time unless you get a login daily buff that allows you to purchase just twice the amount. Now that I can purchase five of the silver ones, you can go over to a dragon star and use your compass. From there, you can click M for your map, click on treasure map, and wait for the maps to reveal themselves with the dragon star. From there, just click on the images and place them where they match. Some of the maps are tricky. Cloud Rise isn't really all that tricky because it's such a small map, but with this, you can receive treasure hunting points as well as additional treasure maps. The more you actually rank up some of the weekly rewards and titles that you'll get, my recommendation for you with this is switching your settings to the most minimal as you can see the treasure chest more clearer without the crazy amount of grass or textures. After you're done, you'll have random pieces of treasure you can sell, some collectibles you can use for yourself or sell. I do recommend using them 
and if you get them again, selling them. If you have rare maps such as epic, unique, or rare maps, simply head on over to the merchant and purchase those maps. Cool thing is, eventually you'll find a mysterious merchant that appears out of nowhere while you're doing these and you can buy even cooler things with them. Now if you go over to your inventory, you'll see which maps are available with the treasure, and you can go over there, use the dragon star with the compass the same way, and that's it. Now I'm assuming at this point you've done your full cultivation, and if you haven't you can click on J, and this should pretty much look like yours. If not, you'll need to finish your history to get your full rewards, and the rest of the things basically. It's important to do these because you'll get gear, and while you're at it you'll also get gold. So when you're at student 1, you should have 50 gear from the storyline, plus a random piece or two of 60 gear plus the random 60 pieces that you get for free from the battle pass and the login rewards. You can start going to your normal modes to get the rest of your 50 gear that's actually better. From there you can get your 60 gear from hard modes, and as of right now the 75 gear from Jade Palace and the other 55 base content, and so on and so forth. To actually get into the matchmaking you can press Control Z or press Control F and type recruitment in the menu. From there you can click on participate via matchmaking and start queuing up for things. The only thing you can't really manually queue up for is instance expiration, you have to actually press J or go over to your cultivation and it will take you there. It's a completely random normal mode that you'll be thrown into, so you can queue for it on the 4 matchmaking button when it's in your daily quest. Now for guilds, or as it's called in the game, alliances. Mine is called We The People, and they all have their own little part in the game. Whether it's to help you with things or whatever the case, it does include some buffs and helpful things for upgrades, active weekly talents such as these ones that you can get here, and it will help your guild out in the long run. But they're not necessary to join. Though I do recommend joining a guild, simply because there's like fortune being added to your guild buffs, and that's additional fortune for your RNG. So why wouldn't you join one? By now you should know what astral essences are, but if you don't, this is something you can freely reset at your class area and set up however you want. These are, for lack of a better word, passives that you can add to your character, whether it's focusing on haste, mastery, perception, or whatever the case. It's going to help you in the long run, so I definitely recommend you checking it out. If you don't like one particular setup, you can go ahead and reset it in your class area and just do another one. Your biographies is something you should know by now already, and if you don't, this is really weird. <laughs> So if you go to Control L, you can go to Biographies and even click on the Daily Quest one. And this is what's needing for the weekly or the daily Taoist approach quest. You can also see which ones you need to finish, and it's recommended to actually complete these as you will receive Astral Essence XP, which is needed to get Astral Essence points to put into, well, your Astral Essences. Your UI. The default UI of the game is a bit of a mess, but luckily you can mess around with it however you want. My recommendation to you is to go over to your skill training area if you don't know how, go to K or your skills and click on skill training and adjust your UI as this bam am is slapping me around like a naughty little pig. I start adjusting the size with right click and the locations, eventually I decide on a UI that works for me and bam, bam, I finished final product. Now that I'm magically at the housing area for this portion of this video, I won't really get into the housing thing because it's not really an end game, but if you're interested in learning about the housing portion of the game, let me know in the comments below. So to recap. Get your cultivation done, finish your PvE and PvP cultivation because it's free gold and items and you'll be able to participate in more things in the game, even if you don't like PvP. Do your dailies, do your weeklies, join a fancy guild, learn your class with training dummies, and that's your end game pretty much for now. Hopefully that helps you guys. I probably missed something that's more likely the case, but if you have any questions or requests, let me know in the comments below and we'll talk about it. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and click the adorable f***ing bell to know when I upload a brand new video. And don't forget to come join my Discord if you want to chat and hang out. Much love and as always, till next time friends.